G'day friends, welcome to today's video. I brought Steve in. Hi everybody. First time for 2018. Hey, thanks welcome for having me. Welcome to 2018, Thank Steve. You. Yeah, happy new years. <laughs> what's your um, <laughs> What's your resolution? I don't have any. I mean, I do. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not big on resolutions. Is it a secret? It's not really a secret. I just, um, I don't know. I, uh, I, I want to be more creative this year. Yes, I guess that leads us to what we're going to talk about today. Nice. I want to say a few things about mixed media art just because I accidentally said I would on Instagram. Um, okay. but, <laughs> but now I'm more taken with something else, a different topic that I think Steve has a lot to talk about and it's just creating for the sake of creating. Yeah, but what's mixed media art? Well, it's basically if you use anything more than one medium to create your piece. So, so if I use pencil, like I'm doing, I'm doing here, I'm using pencil. Well, technically, I stamped it out in ink. I have my... So you've already done it. Yeah. So I, I did my stamp. I got my stamp set from my face base set. I got some Distress Ink, stamped it out as a blueprint. Now I'm using pencil. So that's technically mixed media, because you used two different mediums. Yeah, so I've already used ink and pencil. So now it's already a mixed media piece. But so... you can just keep adding more and more and more and more. So alcohol markers, then I'm going to go in with gel pens. I'm going to go in with paint. Well, you want to know something. I've been what? a mixed media artist since I was a child. I think most people are. Because I use definitely use colored pencils and uh, markers. Yeah. And crayons all in the same portrait. In the same piece. You're yeah. a mixed media artist. I know. See, you look, didn't even know. I didn't even know it. <laughs> Steve found out today, everyone, that he is a mixed media <laughs> artist. I think technically, by that very definition, that, you know, just more than one medium, most people are mixed media artists. Unless you're like, you know, like a hardcore highbrow artist and you're only doing oil paints or you're only doing watercolor. But even then, some watercolorists sketch it out first, so... Oh. Technically. <laughs> I think a lot of people consider mixed media art lowbrow. Really? Yeah. I find that that's very interesting to me, because to me this is really fascinating. Like, the fact that you... Because every medium gives you a different... Um, it's a different effect. Yeah, definitely a different effect. So, like, I can already see, like, the pencil in this, plus the marker on top of it, it is already given it a depth. I love pencil, colored pencil and Copic marker, especially like a red colored pencil outline. It just looks so soft. That's one of my favorites. So if you're curious to know, one of my favorite combos is uh, pencil and alcohol. Colored pencil and alcohol marker. I love using gel pens and, you know, just regular ballpoint pens. This one's from Muji uh, to do lots of fine details. I felt like when we were in high school, we all used to like draw all over our books, right, with our pens, and then when we start thinking about doing, you know, real pieces of art and, you know, getting way too serious for our own like, good. Do, like char Chinese marker. Yeah, you, you let it go. You're right. like, oh no, I can't use a ballpoint pen for this, but they're so good for lashes. Oh yeah. Look at her lashes. Yeah, you can't like, see them right now. I did. They're a little twiggy. <laughs> yeah. She's a little 60s. Oh, by the way, if you want to know how to get those big eyes or uh, or how to just alter stamps in general, I do have a playlist uh, for my stamp series that I did where I went through a ton of different ways to play with the stamp sets. Just so you're curious. Steve, are you curious? I am no. curious, but I, I feel like I've seen those some of those videos. So I, you have. I'm, I'm ahead of the game here. Steve's inundated with all this stuff. What You wouldn't know any of this if I wasn't doing it all the time, would you? Uh, but do you have any interest in this outside of the fact that I do it? Yeah, I think it's interesting, but I would probably wouldn't have like sought it out on my own. Right. But, I mean, since you do it, I'm... Because, I, I mean, I've loved photography even before I met you. Yeah, I've, but, I mean, I used to love to, to paint and draw. See, he's actually a pretty good drawer. Oh, he can draw Ariel kind off of. by heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> it's pretty good. Anyway, let's talk about what, what we really want to talk about. Okay. Creating for the sake of creating. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because you're, you, I mean, you don't have a resolution per se, but this year you do want to be more creative. So what does that even mean? Uh, okay. So I'm currently reading a book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And I think it's super, it's, it's for anybody who's creative, any, and which is most people, but anybody who really kind of lives in a creative world, who takes time out of their life to paint, draw, photo, sing, music, everything. And it just really kind of encourages the belief that, we are creative individuals and it helps um, kind of uh, just enlighten the fact that when inspiration hits, that once it, once it hits and um, it, it like, it will come to you and to, to, to take it by- Don't to, miss your window. Don't miss your window to grab that opportunity. And when inspiration hits and it's just kind of a fus fusion of, you know, yourself, the inspiration, finding, you know, your piece and making it all come together. Essentially, it's like magic. And so that's why I call it big magic. That's a very popular book I heard. Yeah. So I, I don't read personally, but 
Yes, it's true. Steve reads. I do read. But it, it's been really cool. It's been really inspiring for me, especially because I think for the most part, we get really scared of, of creating. We get scared of our talent or our ability. And part of it is because I think we judge it before. Um, we judge how other people we, th- are, we think are going to judge it. Yeah, you try and get into their head and, yeah. and see the problems they might see with it and preempt and that whole thought process and by the time it comes around to showing someone you, you don't want to exactly and so you kind of like fear yourself out of doing it I still do that yeah oh, I do it too I did it the other day so um, stupid drawing you did but <laughs> <laughs> but you know and, and the thing is is like unless you go for it or try you'll never really know what you're capable of doing and so that's kind of what it is for me this year is to really just go for it to not let fear take over and to see what comes out. And to not miss your window. To I not guess. miss my window because. Because you always have ideas. I think uh, Steve, like, just to reiterate, like, Steve always has an idea in his head. Yeah. But, I mean, you don't always have the time for it or the money for it because some of Steve's ideas are humongous. <laughs> um, but it's, it's more like grabbing the opportunity as it comes your way. And especially, like, you know, with photography, it's it's one of those things where you, you technically could, you know, photograph anything we have around the house. You could photograph the cats whenever, but, you know, there's, there's certain types of photography that Steve really, really has a passion for, or there's certain areas that he wants to explore and learn more about. And those sorts of things take a lot of time and preparation. So it, it, I find it doesn't actually take a lot to be discouraged out of continuing. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to be very candid and very vulnerable and very honest, I, we, um, I did a photo shoot yesterday that James helped me out on. And it was a big uh, risk for me because it was more editorial and uh, fashion in its approach, which, not that I'm unfamiliar with it, but it's not really my wheelhouse. So going into it, I was excited and nervous. And, you know, then just kind of based on everything, once the, the images came out, the images are fine and great, but now I'm still trying to figure out what it is. And I'm forcing myself to work on them, even though... I'm kind of, to be honest, at a little bit of a creative loss. Well, they're fine. They're completely fine. I think the thing is that they're just so different to anything you've been working right. on before. And um, I guess neither has made this resolution, but I, even someone pointed it out yesterday. Steve and I have been challenging, challenging each other to do something different with what we already know. Mm-hmm. So, because it's, it's, I'm, I'm the type of person that won't really push myself outside of my comfort zone if I don't have to. I, I like to take things very slow. I'm very calculated. Yeah. I'm not much of a risk taker. And you... I'm the opposite. Yeah. You're a bit more erratic like that. Yeah. But you just need to find the time to do it. So I think... I I mean, I've been challenging Steve to find... First of all, find the time and to fully commit straight away. Mm-hmm. Um, and Steve's been challenging me to be more adventurous with what I'm doing. Yeah, but it's... And it's really great because, it, like, we kind of help encourage each other. And... You know, even right now during like kind of editing these photos right now, there are things that I don't see but James sees, and so then he helps teach me and he shows me different effects to to put on, and I'm in that which is exciting to me. And so then I can either sit there and be like, oh, the pictures aren't what I wanted, or I can sit there and be like, wow, I'm learning something new, and I'm really glad that I did that, and I didn't let fear take over, and I challenged myself to go for it and to do it because now I have extra tools in my tool belt. Yeah, but you're also lucky because you not only did you learn it, but you actually did a really good job learning. <laughs> like most people struggle through the learning process. Well, but... right, and that's okay. Everybody has <coughs> excuse you. Everybody has their their um their time and their speed and yeah. you know. But as long as you learn something, I think it definitely is worth it. And yeah, kind of going on to the, the back to the big magic thing with the idea of fear. You know, Elizabeth Gilbert talks about how fear having a fear, um, you know, response is important. You know, if you see a table falling, (laughs) you know, you want to go grab it or, you know, but however, when fear kind of comes in and takes over, um, and just paralyzes you, that's when it's not, not great. And so she has this analogy that she's going on a road trip and she has creativity, you know, inspiration with her, uh, herself and of course fear and so she goes fear you're gonna come along on this journey and I appreciate you and I'm thankful for for what you are and for what you bring to my life but fear on this journey you're gonna sit in the back seat and in no way are you gonna touch the radio and there's no way that you're gonna grab the steering wheel mm-hmm. so you're gonna have to let creativity or your inspiration and I kind of have have the journey on this one She's clever, Elizabeth She's, Gilbert. Isn't she? She is. Really I'm glad she wrote a book. Well, yeah. we had another interesting talk yesterday about uh, a specific idea, community over competition. Now, this is a very touchy subject. It is a touchy subject. And I think even Steve and I differ on, on the way that we see that, I, that, that idea. 
I'm yeah. not going to go too far into <laughs> it, uh, but one of the things I did want to say is that um, I love to share. I love to share lots of tips and tricks with everyone. I don't love to give everything away because I think a bit of mystery is good. Definitely. Um, but the one thing that Steve really does uh, make sure that he does as well as, you know, teaching himself is give others the opportunity to learn as well. So yesterday on that shoot, he actually invited another photographer friend to come along and second shoot. So she would have the experience of a styled shoot and she would have, you know, more content to add to her mm -hmm. portfolio yeah. and just to be a part of the experience. And I think that is, I think that's one of the things that I am so impressed by in, in you. Oh, Thanks, man. I don't, we don't need to talk about this online, but um, <laughs> but I think it's one of the most important things that I noticed is that that is a true sense of community over competition. And I'm, I mean, I love competition. I think a yeah. good amount of competition is healthy. Uh, I think it's what motivates you and like drives your passion forward and gets you to do more quickly. Um, but also community, like... I, I think it's really important to share that stuff. And I think having, like you opening up your shoot that you've spent so so much time and money and effort putting together to give another uh, another photographer the opportunity to, to be in that with you, I think, you know, even in, in, as a mentor or even just as a friend, I think is incredible. And I love that, that that's what you're into. Thanks. No, I appreciate, it. appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. Look, the thing is, is I, I you know, everybody is creative. There's so many people who are creative and there's so many people who have, um, like art doesn't belong to one person. No. You know, and I think that's kind of and the people big get thing. very possessive. Very possessive, like, well, I had this first, or I did this first. Well, mm. you know what, like... We're not dogs. <laughs> we don't need to mark everything. <laughs> right. Like, it's kind of there for everybody. It's yeah. like, you know, I can be like, well, I used that lens first. And it's like, no, everybody uses a 50 millimeter 1.2. Yeah, you did not create right. a I did 50 create, millimeter I did lens. Create it. And even the person who created it probably got it, the idea based off of another lens. You know what yeah. I mean? Like... It, it, and that's some of the stuff that people get person. in their head. Yeah. That's some, I think just as much as people being scared to start, I think some people are honestly scared to, to be told off mm -hmm. or to be um, accused of, of something like, you know, copying or stealing. Or, right. And, and I think that's where, um, I think that's where you do a fantastic thing in, in sharing and encouraging people to take of what you have to offer because I've seen even and this isn't the first time Steve's you know essentially mentored or invited other photographers to shoot with him and um, I, I mean in those girls I've seen that passion just ignite to us at a point where they're ready to start doing that for themselves and they're, they're taking their next steps forward in their journeys and I think yeah. one of the most important things that we both uh, love about the messages that we receive at church every so often is that you know in our congregation in our church community we are not we're not taught to sit there and obey the leader and wait for instruction. We're taught to be the leaders, to go out, minister to other people so that they can become the leaders. And it's that, it's it's like a plague of people sharing and, and encouraging that creativity in others. Well, yeah, and also, and thank you for saying that. And part of it is also like, when you share, you, you, you also, you receive, you know what I mean? When you give, yeah. you receive. And so it's like, I might be sharing this experience with a couple of photographer friends or people who want to do this. But then I watch how they shoot or how they create, and I learn something from them too, mm -hmm. which everybody then benefits from it. And it then there's also no feeling, share. yeah. Then there's no feelings of resentment. And even if this other person might have gotten the winning shot of yesterday and it wasn't me, so what? I'll get it. I'll get it next time. And you know what? And everybody deserves to get the quote unquote winning shot anytime. You know? Yeah. We all we're nobody is more deserving of it than than the other person. Yeah. I just think it's really important to encourage that and. I, um, you know, competition is great, and I don't think you should leave that behind. Well, no, and I think to have a competitive nature is, is, or maybe just, you, you know, have balance. You have balance versus, like, like a, a, maybe a competitive edge over a competitive spirit. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, definitely. because you don't want it to, the com competition to just drive you, you know, w like, you kind of push everything out of the out of the window just so that you can get or you can win. Because winning isn't everything, Well, I right? think that I think that comes back to the idea that you're not actually competing against everybody else. You're competing against it's yourself, yourself, which is so cliche. But nothing will drive you further than trying to top yourself. Right. So I, um, I think I just keep that in the back of my head. Yeah, helps you grow. Yeah, and just to keep sharing, because it's fun to share. Definitely. And I love to see what you guys do. Yeah. I love to see it. it on social media. Create yeah. just for the sake of it. It yeah, doesn't have to mean anything. Definitely, and I love seeing everything on like on the on the Berkmates page too. I think it's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love to see all that art. 
anyway, thanks for joining us yeah. for 2018, Steve. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Bye.